Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll show you how to erase your X from your favorite photo using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com, and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the photo we'll be working with for today's tutorial. This is the after photo. Shift click on here, you guys can see this is the before photo. So I'll be showing you how to erase somebody from a photo here. And this is a pretty complicated background, but this is a very effective technique. It's gonna be using a free plugin called the Resynthesizer plugin. I actually have a tutorial on how to download and install this plugin for both Windows and Mac. I believe it also works for Linux as well. I'll link that video to this tutorial for those of you who wanna check it out. But for starters, I'm going to open up the original image. So I'll go to File, Open, or Open Recent in my case, and I'll click on the original photo. And I'll hold Control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. So I'll grab my Pass tool or my Bezier Curves tool. You can hit the B key on your keyboard or click on it in the toolbox. I do have a single column toolbox set up here, and I have a tutorial on how to do that if you want to check that out. But I'll hold control, zoom in as far as I need to. And I just need to select the parts of the person I want to erase. So I'm going to start right here on the arm of our main subject. So this is the person we're going to keep. And I'm just going to click and then click and drag my mouse to create curves along here. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, but the closer you can get it, the better the final product will look. I'm just clicking and dragging my mouse along here. And then once we get at the end of this portion here where the two are intersecting, then we don't have to be quite as precise. So we can just click close to the person that we want to erase, but we don't have to totally follow the contours of their body or their head, etc. So relatively close here. Also, the less room we leave, the less work we're going to have to do later. So we do want to get fairly close. All right, so as we get close here, I'm going to make sure I select out this portion, bring it back in, hold control, zoom in with my mouse wheel, and we're gonna hold the control key and create a union between our first and last path. That way we have a nice enclosed path. So here is our selected person we want to remove, or the X. Next, what I need to do is come over to my tool options for the paths tool and click selection from path. So that'll create a selection area around our person. Then I'm gonna come over here and I want to duplicate the original image layer. So now we have a backup layer. Once we have this backup layer, now I can erase the subject. So for starters, what I'll do is come over to Filters, Enhance, Heal Selection. And I have this set to 50 for the pixels all around as the sample from and random for the filling order and I'll press OK. So there is essentially our first pass at this. So it's not gonna look perfect at first. I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect it. Everybody's final result here will look different depending on the type of photo you're using. But what I'll do is hit the C key on my keyboard. That will grab my clone tool. And I'll hold Control and zoom in. So this part looks weird. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's her hand right here. And I'll increase it. It kind of looked like some floating heart or something you would see from like a time machine gone bad. Anyway, I'm gonna hold the Control key and click to grab a source area. And we're just gonna paint over these pixels that are different, like so. We're gonna try to keep these areas as similar as possible. Let me hold the Control key. I have to redo this part. And we could do this as well. We could probably use the heel tool for this, but I will just use the control key here. And then up top here, there are some areas that don't look as good. So for example, this tree. So I'll hold the control key and paint that tree out using the clone tool. And then same with this area right here. 
hold control and click to grab a source area and then paint on what's called the destination area. Same with right here and right here as well. So there are some parts here that need to be fixed. We're gonna fix that a bit later on. But now I'll come down here and holding control and zooming in, now you'll see there are some seams going on here and there's also a shadow that we need to take care of. So for some of this stuff, we're going to use another technique, which I do go over in my five ways to remove anything from a photo in GIMP. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and grab my lasso tool and hold control, zoom in a bit closer. So this part, because it's pretty much homogenous here, the areas to the left and right are pretty much the same. And once I draw this, by the way, and connect it, I'll hit the enter key. What I can do, because these areas are so much the same, is just come over here, duplicate this area, hit the M key on my keyboard, and then just move this to the left, holding the control key to drag it in straight line mode. So probably about right there is fine. And then I can right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask two, I'll choose selection and click add. Control shift A to deselect that. So here you can see this looks pretty good now. Hold control, zoom out. We're gonna do the same for this area right here. So I'm going to come back up here, grab my lasso tool, and we're going to just outline the shadow that was here and then get as close to this as we possibly can. And come over here, hit the enter key. And once again, I'm going to duplicate our original layer we were working on and just drag this to the very top. And then I'll hit the M key to grab my move tool and click and drag this one upwards just cause the area underneath looks more similar. So about right there. And then once again, right click, add layer mask, choose selection and click add. And there you can see the effect of that. Control shift A to deselect it. And now we have a pretty good looking image there. So now what I'll do is just merge these two layers to the layer below. So first I'll apply the layer mask. So I'll right click, apply layer mask. So that just leaves this one area here, this little area down here. And then I'll come down to the next one, do the same thing. So right click, apply layer mask. I'll come back up top and I'm just gonna hit the merge down button and then hit it again. And so that will merge those two layers onto our original layer. And there you can see this is already doing a good job of erasing those shadows and all those seams. But we do need to fix these little seams here. So I'll hit the H key on my keyboard. And what I'll do now is come over and click to create a new layer. And this one I'll name heal and fill it with transparency and click okay. And you wanna make sure in the tool options, this is set to sample merged, hold control, zoom in. I also have my hardness set to a little bit below 50 and the force, I'll set that also to around 50. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to using the heel tool, so definitely check that out. But because I have sample merged turned on for the heel tool, when I control click to grab a source area, that's going to grab from the pixels below here, the layers below versus just the heel layer up top. So you can see now that as I paint, that'll help to get rid of the seam. This area right here didn't turn out great, but we can fix that. Let me decrease the size of this. And now we'll paint over those areas. And then let me increase the size of this again, hold control, click over here. And once again, paint over those seams. So remember the heel tool is also known as the seamless cloning tool. So it does help to get rid of seams and that can help blend things together. Let me back up here. This isn't looking great. And we can also come up top here, do the same thing. So there's a little bit of a seam there. Increase the size of this. There's a bit of a seam there. And you can increase or decrease your brush using the left or right brackets on the keyboard. And then down here, same thing, hold control and click. Let's decrease the brush with the left bracket and just work on, let me hit control Z, trying to blend this area better. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, you know, realistic looking. Hold control and zoom out. That's looking pretty good. The last area we need to work on is this tree here. So as you can see, part of this has been cut out and actually we also need to get rid of the creepy hand right here. So let me actually do that first while we're still on the heel layer. 
So let's decrease that, switch over to the clone tool by hitting the C key on the keyboard, or you can grab it from this tool group here. Hold control and click, and we'll just clone out the creepy hand. And it'll just look like her sleeve is co covering up her hand there. Hold control and zoom out. It does kind of look like she doesn't have a hand, but um, it's not terrible. And actually, let's quickly copy that hand and see if we can get that to look realistic. So B to grab the paths tool. Let's come down here to our layer. And I'm just going to quickly outline the hand. Like so, hold control, click. Hold control, click and drag to create handles. Once we have the path drawn around the hand, I'll want to turn this into a selection area, so I'll come over here and click Selection from Path. Making sure we're on our photo layer here, I'll hit Control C to copy that, and then Control Shift A to deselect the selection area, and Control V to paste. And let's put this on its own layer, so here's the floating selection it creates. We'll put it on its own layer, hit the M key to grab the Move tool, and let's move this over here. And we need to place this above the heel layer, so I'll click and drag that. And of course this is backwards, so I'll hit Shift F to grab the flip tool. And make sure this is set to horizontal and click to flip it. Shift R to rotate it. And so we'll just rotate it until it looks natural like that. Hit rotate. Now we need to erase the part that goes behind the sleeve. I'll just have the hand kind of barely sticking out so we can't really see a whole lot of the detail here. So I'll come over to the pasted layer, right click, go to add layer mask and choose white full opacity and click add. Hold control, zoom in. Make sure that our foreground and background color is black and white. Clicking that little icon. I'll hit the P key on my keyboard to grab my paintbrush tool. And on the layer mask, I'm just going to now paint black. And then I can hit the X key to switch to white and then X to switch back to black. We can erase some of this green. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on that, but now it looks like she has her hand barely sticking out of there. So it doesn't look as much like she only has one hand. Finally, let's fix the tree portion. So I'll come over here, create a new layer, and I'll name this Paint. Fill it with transparency and click OK. Now I'm going to hit the A key on my keyboard or grab the airbrush tool from in my toolbox and hold control and zoom in. And actually real quick, what I wanna make sure is if I come down here, the color picker tool has an option for sample merged. So make sure that option is checked and then hit the A key again to grab the airbrush tool. The reason being is when I hold the control key and click, that'll grab my color picker tool and that will pick from all of the layers again instead of just the transparent layer on the very top. So that ensures we can grab these tree colors. And I'm going to increase the size of the airbrush tool. And I'm just going to very loosely try to paint the tree trunk in. And I'm no artist, no Bob Ross, but you can see this will look pretty convincing at the end despite that. So hold control, click to grab this green color here. And we're just gonna fill in the gap very loosely. Hold control. So holding control, zoom in a bit. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do for this tree is hold control and click to grab this highlight. And let's just increase the brush a bit. I'm just going to try to mimic this highlight here on the tree, which is kind of hard with the mouse. If you have a Wacom tablet, I definitely recommend using that at this portion. All right, so there is the tree. And here's a before, here's an after. What we need to do is sort of match the blur that's going on here to the lens blur behind. So if you're using GIMP 2.10.20, you can use the lens blur filter. And I'll do that by going to filters, blur, lens blur. And there you can see the effect of this. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. It doesn't need to be that high, like so. And I'll click okay. So hold control, zoom out. And hold control, zoom in. Let's also just real quick fix this last little area. So I'll hit the H key to grab my heel tool, hold control and click, and let's just heal this little seam I can see right here, it's bugging me. And maybe this portion there. And now she can happily move on with the rest of her life. 
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.